What's going on guys, Lawrence here and welcome to part 2 of our Cinema 4D tutorial. And today we're going to be working with the bevel, the extrude and the extrude inner. So, I'm going to try and keep this as short and sweet as possible. So, I'm going to explain to you the definition of all three and how to use them. Well, first of all, a very key important thing to know is that the extrude and all those options don't actually work with a primitive shape. So, as we learned in the first tutorial, we can convert it into an editable shape. Or a parametric shape. So we're going to go up to the top and start off with that. So that's the letter C on the keyboard. Now we've got the editable shape and we looked at these tools last time. So the point, the edge and the polygon mode. So if we go on the polygon mode we now have access to all of the faces of this cube and it's just simply a cube. That's it. So what does the actual um, options provide for us? So first of all we look at the extrude. So the extrude is a way of forcing something to push something out to expand something I, I just say it's to, to push out whatever panel or face you have so if we've got uh, let's say this top panel and this panel here we can extrude those by going right click and extrude and we get this box here and if we drag out you can see how from the original square that we had it's taken both of those and forced and created a shape based upon what we've selected if we were to now select this panel, we can push it out this way as well. And we can create a whole host of shapes that way. Now some people argue, why don't we just use this? Well, you can, but it's I, I think it's a really bad idea. It just generally ruins the whole structure of the shape. And when you're modeling, you need things to be as accurate as possible. So where does the extrude inner work with this? Because, okay, so the extrude pulls an object out. But what about the extrude inner? Surely that means you're going to drag the shape inwards. Well, that's actually not true. The extrude itself does that as well. So you can move it both forward and backward. So you can see here we've got the shape where we've extruded inwards. So we've now got an open front and we can see it is further back. The extrude inner, what its purpose is, is to take whatever you've selected. So in this case, this square panel. And instead of us having to go and, let's say we wanted to make a cube in the middle here and stem that out, let's say we make it a bridge or something, we we can't really go about every time getting the knife and cutting shapes. We One, might be inaccurate, and two, it's just not an effective work way. So what we can do is use the extrude inner. So if we right click and go to extrude inner, you'll see the tool has changed. And you can also see in the middle of this square at the top here, there's an orange section and that literally signifies exactly what this tool does. So if you drag inwards, you don't actually see the object itself moving. All you'll see is it creates what's known as a subdivision. And a subdivision is where you split the shape into several parts. So we've split the shape here. So we now have that original rectangle, sorry, the original square. And we've still got the original square except it's condensed. And in order to get that condensed, the shape has decided these are the shapes we need to input to make this work properly still. So now that we've done that, we can extrude in again. You can see it's made a separate subdivision. And we can go again if we want. We can go as many times. And now if we wanted to extrude, what we currently have selected will be the only thing that extrudes. And that's the same for any object. You can't extrude inner, you can't bevel, or you can't just simply extrude unless it's selected. So that's pretty cool. So. One thing you can also do is you can also do multiple objects at once. So I can select these two and extrude those outwards. Now, there may be times where you wonder, well, what's the point of the extrude inner? Well, a great example of this is if you have a sphere. So if we go and get a sphere and we'll make it editable, we have all these panels. So if we were just going to extrude out, let's say, these four, oops, these four points here, you may think, okay, that's fine. Now, what you'll actually notice immediately is there's like a funny gradient that's going on here, right in the middle. It looks really skewed. It doesn't look right. And when we go to render it, it will also show exactly the same. It just doesn't look right. It's created the gradient, and this is what's happening. And this is something that's called an n-gon. And an n-gon is something that Cinema 4D produces. It's a, an unknown shape, and it tries to cover up that shape by just morphing the points together. But it does not know how to interpret light sources and things properly. So this is a great opportunity to use the inner extrude. So you want to keep the surface of the shape the same as it was. So you don't want the sphere to be all bumpy and gradiented out. You just want these four points to come out. 
So if we right click, go inner extrude, and if I zoom in really close, you can see I'm just going to make the very, very slight inner extrude here. Very minute. You can literally see if I zoom in, not quite that close. If I zoom in, there's just literally that very thin line, which is almost unseeable from right here. Now, because I selected all four panels, all four will do the same. So now if I right click and extrude, and we extrude, you can see it's come out perfectly. The shape structure is the same. There's no lumps and bumps in the middle here. And we've still got the same effect. This is still extruded out, except much more neater. Of course, you can do it the other way without the extruder, but this is just an example of ways that you can keep things in better order. It's just a way to prevent the shape from being damaged in any way. It's like a, a fallback option. So, how about the bevel? Well, the bevel is virtually the same as the extrude, and it's actually kind of a combination of the extrude inner at the same time. Because what will happen is when you bevel, so right click and go to bevel, we can actually see as I do that, it's creating that sort of inner extrude effect. You can see the shape smoothed in and it's created the subdivisions around it, but it's actually still extruded the shape outwards. So this is pretty cool. What it's allowed us to do is actually create a soft sort of extrusion, so it does it quite subtly. And these can be used quite a lot. You can also modify all of the properties, extrude, etc., through the Properties Manager. So if we go down here, we can see we go to the Polygon Extrusion. We can change simply the extrusion on its own, or we can actually go and change the actual way the uh, bevel works through the offset. So you can see here we can make it either sticking outwards or inwards. We have full control over this. Now, apart from just doing that, there are other ways you can control the bevel in the shaping options. But to be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure how that's working properly right now. So I'm not going to bother. I will at a later time explain. But for the time being, that's all you're really going to need to know about the bevel. So that is pretty much it for the bevel and the extrude and the extrude dinner. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. Don't forget to follow along with part three where we look at the awesome NURB editing tools. And trust me, you do not want to miss those. They are really cool. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoy. And I'll see you around. Take care.